No, if we think what today's, where did today's modern China, when did it start? It started with her. I mean, after Mao died, you know, Deng Xiaoping um, changed the course of China and um, uh, started the open door policy and so on. But he was returning to a model, and that model had been created by this woman she had a new revolutionary idea. She thought, why must we keep confronting with the West? Why can't we open our door and do business with the West and better our benefit ourselves? And that idea changed China. But she was also rather drawn to Western ways. At the moment she took power, she sent people abroad to see what the West was like. You know, China had been closed for a hundred years and nobody had any idea what the West was like. And Cixi's envoys then wrote back these reports. I mean, actually they were full of praises about the West because they were all saying that and um, here are you know, America, Britain, they were astonishingly like the Sandai, the, the Shun Yao Yu, the, these three mythical kingdoms which were Confucian ideal societies. And these people were saying they were amazing that they seemed to be existing over the great oceans. So, and in particular, I think what must have made a big impact on Cixi was the Western way of treating women. I mean, you know, what we have today, the um, modern way of mining, modern industries, China's first modern navy, the um, army, um, uh, electricity, telegraphs, telegrams, and the railways, and all these have been introduced by Cixi. I mean, Cixi was um, deeply religious. She was a Taoist, she was a Buddhist, and she revered sort of this, sort of, she was deep into ancestor worship, then revered these tombs, and she didn't want the railways, the trains, to disturb China's landscape, to disturb the, um, the landscape. You know, each tomb is tenderly selected by feng shui masters and being t attended by the families. Um, and, and she didn't want to, she didn't want to destroy that Chinese religion. So for 20 years, she kept this debate going on among her top echelon. And she didn't feel all the reasons in favor of railways like transport, shipping troops, and so on was enough to, for people to sacrifice their religion until this man, Zhang Zhidong, you know, this, um, this great uh, reformer of China, proposed one advantage for the railway. She, he proposed the building a railway from Beijing to Wuhan, and now this railway is extended to Canton. And this railway would link central China, the heartland of China, with the outside world through the Yangtze River and, of course, through the sea. And this way, machines could be imported into China to, per, to, um, to, produ um, to work on the local product, to Huo, mm -hmm. and for, to propose, to process this local product and then export them. She saw at that time, in 1889, that export was the way to make China rich, to lift China out of poverty. From 1902, she, she started a series of, of well, groundbreaking, earth-shattering reforms that deserved to be called the real revolution of 20th century China. Her first decree after she came back to Beijing was to abolish foot binding. I mean, you know, I, th that's how I first got interested in Cixi, actually. I just wanted to show you this, my grandmother's, um, you know, foot binding 
was not just to put a piece of cloth around the feet. Only the big toe was allowed to grow, and the other four toes and the arch were crushed under a big stone, and the binding was there to stop the broken bones from recovering. So Chinese Han Chinese women were tortured for more than a thousand years by this ghastly practice. Now, Cixi always hated foot binding. And in 1902, her first decree was to outlaw foot binding. And then she did things like uh, she introduced the new educational system, abolished the old educational system. And uh, today, in mainland China, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, all the Chinese areas, we're all studying, we're all using this educational system that had been borrowed from the West. And so she also introduced the Western legal systems and abolished medieval practices like a death by a thousand cuts which is to slowly, you know, slice you to death. And, um, and uh, she introduced the free press. Um, I mean, press under her was unprecedented. Well, the freedom of press under her was unprecedented and quite arguably unsurpassed. Um, and her last project was to turn China into a constitutional monarchy. So, so she, you know, buried her own dynasty. Um, I mean, she delivered China to the Republic, but she refused to deliver China to the Japanese. 